Okay, so in today's video we'll be picking back up where we left off as far as uh, user-defined data types. We'll be showing how to um, use the user-defined data types that we made in the prior video. If you did not see the, the first video, um, basically we just made the uh, UDTs that we we're going to um, use for modular programming, uh, making this, uh, you know, pretty more a little bit more robust and, and something that we could, you know, just simply go in and not have to type in different uh different instances all the time kind of make it more cut and dry and, and cookie cutter so I will leave the uh, other video the first video in the show notes below in case you wanted to watch that so uh, real quick kind of go over where we were uh, this is using an emulator processor so I'm not using any hardware I'm using version 20 uh, we named our processor motion data uh, user defined data types so a UDT um, also in the date and time uh, I have my uh, enable time synchronization which is very important when it comes to motion uh, we just you know I, I thought that the perfect example for a UDT is motion because the, the depth and clarity of it is, um, is is there so first and foremost we'll go in and we'll add a motion group and we'll just call this uh, motion group yeah I mean it's just to have a, a, a group there. So we'll come in and add our servo. Um, in our instance, we won't, um, we're not actually going to have any hardware, so we could do a virtual, but it's just best that we just have a servo. So we'll put in the servo and we'll put uh, the name is Axis. Uh, we'll call this Axis01. And then we'll come in and add Axis2. Uh, axis or axis O2 and that way we have two axis center down, down here we can come down and um, like add you know like a, uh, we can add our, our communications we can add basically our our motion stuff to this this processor um, we're not, again I'm, I don't have anything so I'll, I'll just show you real quick on, on what to do So we want to come down here. I believe it's Seracos. <clears throat> so we want to use the uh, Seracos. Um, I, uh, generally speaking, I use the eight axis. You can use two or, or four, or whatever you want to use. So we'll just create that real quick, and we'll call it Circos uh, Network. Um, <clears throat> we'll put it in slot two, and then we'll come in slot two, and we'll add a new module, and we'll come in and put the drive, whatever servo drive it is. Um, and in our case, we can pick just about anything. Um, first, most likely you're going to lead off with uh, an amplifier, so the uh, IAM. Um, we'll just pick this this IAM, and we'll name it Axis01. Uh, and then we'll, we'll come in and throw another one in there, and again, we'll come in and use the same same thing so we're not using the amplifier on this one because we've already amplified it uh, we'll just use the uh, the BMO one and then we'll call this axis of two so compatibility you can leave the compatibility um, depending on you know what what uh, compatibility your controller is but we'll go ahead and add that in there so real quick we can come back and link these so associated axis you want to put this as uh, it's going to come back in. We can change that up here, uh, what we're going to put in there. So the module that we're going to put, associated modules and stuff like that. But to get back to the user defined data type, because uh, we've already kind of ate up about four minutes, what we want to do is we want to come back in and uh, basically in the main task which I have it at 47 millisecond periodic task um, I want to add a new uh, routine and we'll call this motion control and 
and then we'll come back in in the main and throw in our JSR2 link. Um, this is the jump, jump to subroutine from the main so from the main pro, our main routine in, in this task. We're going to jump to that. Okay, so now we're going to come in and you, what you want to make sure you do is even though we've made our UDTs, you still have to use the UDT in the same in the same uh, with an instruction, right? So we didn't actually make an instruction. We we're just basically making our data types. So with that said, let's go to motion. Uh, this would be the state. So the basic like state on, off, reset. Uh, then you have uh, the moves, uh, which is basic moves. You have advanced stuff or, or group stuff, I should say. And then you have advanced stuff, which is like motion axis arm, disarm, and stuff of that nature. We're going to be doing states to cut it on. So we'll come in and <clears throat> add a second rung because we're going to be doing both of them. And we'll call this, uh, we'll just pick, sorry, I got to let this catch up. So we'll pick axis one, we'll pick axis two, and then we'll come down and make our, um, this is where you, <clears throat> you use your UDT. So under motion control, uh, obviously this is this is going to be a, a motion axis on. We're going to call this uh, axis axis uh, 01 basic, just to kind of keep it simple. And down here in UDT, our, our data type, that's when you're going to use your UDT. You're going to take out motion instruction, and you're going to put in the UDT name that you made. In our case, that's the basic motion UDT. Um, you, you create it and then you come back and it still thinks that it's, it's not down to its lowest level right now so you you click on it again you open the properties up and if you remember we made 10 instances of every motion uh, command we're going to use so there's 10 in the uh, dimensions there's 10 of these instructions we're just going to use the very first one which is zero and we're going to do the same thing for the next uh, axis 2. So we'll call this axis 02 and, and again it will call it basic and it will come down here and we'll change our data type to basic again and we'll come down and put it to the instruction we're going to use. So again the uh, motion axis on which is the MSO. So that will cut the instruct or that will actually cut the servos on. And what you can do is you can go ahead and throw all the, the axis in. And most of the time what you commonly see is um, if the axis is on or off, you you know you wouldn't you wouldn't index it on. First you would want to cut it off first, so we'll get into adding uh, we'll, we'll add an off in here. So what we can do is actually like, I'm sorry, we'll take both of these and put them up here. We'll take both of these and put them down here. We'll get rid of some of this to kind of get some clarity. Um, and then we'll call this again. We'll do the motion axis one, motion axis two, and then we'll call this. Uh, actually, we already have our our. Um, we already have our, our data type at this point, so we'll call, we'll go down and we'll get our motion axis off. <clears throat> this is where it kind of makes it kind of modular because you don't have to keep typing, you don't have to keep doing different things. You just pick out which one you want to use, and it's done for you. So you can come down and you know just keep programming, um, and it just makes it so much simpler. You know, you just keep keep doing whatever you want to. So uh, we did. That and say if you had to have a re, like a reset or something, like a shutdown reset, you could do a shutdown reset. Um, in in my case, we're just going to do like a fault reset, just to kind of quickly show you how to use it. So again, you come down axis one, axis two, and then we'll come down and select our tag, and and our tags will come down to where we have our our. Uh, motion axis fault reset and we're still at our first level so we're still going to just use the I should say first level we should, we're still under our first instance of, of using this tag so we're, we're going to use zero 
and we'll pop that in real quick and so that's basically how that's done um, and again you want to make sure like if you don't have a fault you're not going to do a fault but um, I just want to show you how to use the, uh, the instructions you, you quickly instead if you if you had to make an instruction like instead if you had to come in here and, and you know use an instruction you'd have to first select your axis you're using right and then you would have to make a whole new um, like a, you'd have to type in whatever you wanted to like motion at axis 01 on and then make it a motion instruction well you would have to keep doing that same thing you know instead you you already have your UDT made so um, using the UDT is just is it makes it so much more modular uh, so much quicker uh, if you you're just keep building and, and you know making it as big as you want to real quick we'll, we'll come in here and we'll say uh, what I'll say is if off um, we'll come in here and we'll go to just throw some basic controls real quick so if on we want to cut it off first so what we'll do is come in here and access one and we'll say that if the axis is on if the action status is on uh, we want to come in and cut it off and the reason I say do that is because you you kind of want to it, it keeps it clean um, and that way you know that you're not trying to cut it on and cut it on and when it's hard you're not trying to cut something on when it's already on and keep it as clean, clean as possible at that instance if it's off you can come in and just use the same thing <coughs> in the reverse statement so you just basically say drag these down and say if they're they're off well I changed that on accident so you can drag these down and use that if they're off so you know what we would want to do is we want to have like states in here and we would want to say you know if, if equal to our um, we would compare these and we would say say, say for instance if this was equal to a certain function like so we'll make a tag that's called like state and we'll put a state control and we'll keep it as a, a, a dent and we'll say if if this is one and then we'll drag this down if this is two and then for that instance we would say okay so if both of these are off we come down here and basically say if both of these are off we would definitely go to actually you don't want to drag you want to copy because we're offline paste copy paste and then we would say we would move you know like uh, for states we would basically just do something of that nature uh, something real cut and dry similar I mean so you're actually cutting both axes if they're if they're on you're cutting them off if they're both off you're automatically moving into state um, state one so actually this would be state zero this would be state one sorry I started off wrong so um, with that said you come in here you do something similar to this uh, if you're in state one and you have everything on you would basically move and I know kind of jumping through this real kind of quick but I just wanted to show you how how modular this could be so we basically come in here and we throw that uh, I'm sorry put that in the wrong spot um, we'll call that two and if it's two you know you'd be basically be cutting it on so what we would really want to do is you would want to clear a fault if a fault is present um, before you do any kind of on or offs or anything like that so first and foremost you should probably do the, the fault resets and stuff like that if a fault is present you would want to 
uh, reset it first. This is just kind of showing you how easy and cut and dry and, and you know how modular this can be using the UDT. Um, and I just you know kind of wanted to show you a, a brief description and, and, and kind of show you uh, an instance of, of how this can you know help you and, and make things quicker. You know within a couple minutes obviously we've we've been able to program a um, shut off our, our axis that we're, we're running and would come down here and in the next instance we cut it on and that would bring power to the servo um, and you know but I will highlight the fact that in normal operations you would want to check if you have a fault first um, if you if you do check if you have a fault first if you have a fault you reset it um, if you have a shutdown you reset it and then you come down and you do a motion off um, and you just do the motion off just to verify again you just want to, to verify you're not cutting something on that was previously told to cut on so you don't get any kind of uh, instruction errors or anything like that. So you come down here do that first and then you would come in and do your motion axis on and you keep progressing down. And I have a whole different, uh, I can actually put that in the show notes below, uh, a different, uh, uh, I guess, program I did that, that shows the exact functionality of, of how you would structure that. Um, I'm not necessarily using the UDT. I can come back and, and do a full uh a full video on that um, but again I'm, I'm about hitting that that uh, 16 minute mark right now so I kind of wanted to just show how to use the UDT um, this is again pretty pretty simple keeps it modular keeps it simple uh, easy to, for you to use and hopefully you know you kind of gain something from this and if you have any questions you can just put a comment in, in the, the notes below I'll be glad to uh, help you out and um, again it's just I think using this is, is keeps your your program into uh, real simple, cut and dry, and, and very fast. So, uh, if you have any questions, again, leave them in the comments below, and I'll be glad to answer them. And I'll leave the other videos in the show notes below. Okay, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll be posting some more videos shortly.